So today we're going to do part 2. We were doing black magic in the light of Quran and Sunnah. Let's continue. Aus Billahi Minash Shaitan Jim. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Surah Tu Taha, Ayah number 67 and 69. So here we see Musa al Islam conceive here with the himself, you know, because for Aujasa fi nafsihi khifata Musa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fear not. You know, la taqaf. Inna kantal Allah, surely you will have the upper hand. Allah is saying that. And throw that which is in your right hand. And it will swallow up that which they have made. You know, all the magicians, they were doing the tricks. Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Musa al-Islam to, you know, uh, throw the asa, the staff, and it will swallow everything. That which they have made it only a magician's trick and the magician will never be successful to whatever amount of skill he may attain. And here later we see Surah Al-Araf, Ayah number 117 to 122 and we reveal to Musa al-Islam, throw your staff and behold it swallowed up straight away all the falsehood which they showed so that truth came to pass and false was proved that which they were doing. So they were defeated there and returned in disgrace. And the sorcerer were cast down, buying themselves. They said, we believe in Allah, Rabbul Alameen, Jinn and mankind, the Lord of Musa and Harun. Subhanallah. Wa awhayna ila Musa an alqi asaka fa izahiya talqaf ma ya'fikoon fa waqal haqqa wa balbat فَبَتَلَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ فَغُلِبُ الْحُنَالِكَ وَانْقَلَبُ الْسَاغِرِينَ وَأَلْقِ السَّحْرَةُ السَّاجِدِينَ They went into the sajda prostrating. And what else they did? قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ رَبِّ مُوسَى وَحَارُونَ And now they said we believe. Like you know, all of a sudden, when they saw how he swallowed up you know, and that moment of time in the tafsir it comes, وَأُلْقِيَ سَحْرَةُ sajidin. As soon as they, uh, it was cast down, bowing themselves in the sujood, completely submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, they said, قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ They said, we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Rabb of Alameen. And also they mention Rabb of Moses. Musa and Harun, complete submission. So look at their iman. They were not scared of uh, Pharaoh. They submitted because they recognized the truth. So here uh, we see, قُلْ أَوْزُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا قَلَقْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ نَفَّاسَةِ فِي الْقَدْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدْ Here in this we say, I take refuge with the Lord of the daybreak from the evil of what he has created, from the evil of darknesses, when it gathers from the evil of the women who blow knots. You know, when talking about here blowing knots, so who, who will be blowing knots? The people who are doing the black magic. When he envies, this is in Surah Al-Falaq 1-5. According to Qurtubi, Women in the above uh, ayahs from the evil of the women who blow the knots uh, implies female sorcerers, sahirat, who blows on thread knots while creating their spells. Ibn Qasir stated that according to the scholar of exegesis, Mujahid Ikrama al Hassan Qatad and Dahak. Women in this verse is from the evil of the woman who blows on the knots. Implies to female sorcerers. Okay? Ibn Jarir al-Tabari stated that according to Qasmiya and scholars to exegesis, women in the above ayahs from the evil of the woman who blows on the knots. Implies female sorcerers who blow on the threaded knots during the spell. Overall we see Verses on black magic and sorcerers are profuse and known even to those with little knowledge of Islam. So evidence from Sunnah. 
black magic was performed on prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that he began to imagine that he was doing that which he was not aisha radhiyallahu anha reported one day he invoked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a long period and then said i feel that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has inspired me as to how i should cure myself two persons came to me in my dream and sat and you know these dreams are truth one by my head and the other by my feet who is saying rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of them asked the other what is the ailment of this man about whom they are talking about prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the other replied he has been bewitched who rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the first asked who has bewitched him the other replied lubayt ibn al asam they know who who did it okay the first one asked what material has he used the other replied a comb the hair gathered on it you know when we comb and keep the comb there without removing the hair sometimes even removing also sometimes it remains one or two so here uh, we get the evidence that they took the hair okay and the outer skin of the pollen of the male dad palm the first asks where is that the other reply it is in the well of zarwan there was a well called zarwan they they planted over there so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went out towards the well and then returned and said to me on his return its date palms the date palms near the well are like the heads of the devil how they look like that the heads of the devil i asked did you take out those things with which magic was performed he said no for i have been cured by allah subhanahu la subhanahu la taala and i am afraid that this action may spread evil among the people later on the well was filled up with the earth you know it was uh, completely filled up with the earth so what we learn here that was not removed but it was filled with the earth so here in this hadith refers to the black magic done to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the jews hired lubayd ibn al asam one of the most skilled sorcerer among the jews to perform black magic on prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in return for 3 dinars just for 3 dinars can you imagine astaghfirullah astaghfirullah to begin his work it is believed that lubayd obtained tufts of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hair from a young female servant usually it happens this way you know the people who are accessible they only helped so here also the servant who used to go to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam house he tied the hair to a knot using his spell on it and dropped in a well according to different narration of the hadith it appears that this black magic belong to the category of causing sexually inability as a result prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam imagined himself capable of having sexual intercourse with one of his wives but when he approached her he could not do it nevertheless this type of black magic did not affect his brain so remember that it did not affect his brain whenever wahi comes he did the like you know uh, there was nothing wrong with his brain or uh, nothing wrong with his memory but was only confined to sexual performance okay scholars disagree as to the duration of the spell some hold that it is lasted for 40 days so there is a difference of opinion so the other says some hold it lasted for 40 days while others hold different opinions the hadith also indicates that the jews perform a black magic with the intent to kill prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam given that there are some lethal types of black magic but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him reduced to the least harmful type a rabat inability to have sexual intercourse with his wives but refuting the views which reject the above um, tradition according to al maziri al mubtada in the innovators in the religions have rejected the above hadith on the grounds that it would undermine the status of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and cast doubts doubts over his authenticity so furthermore accepting such a hadith would weaken the credibility of the islamic law so they also argued that when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the angel jibril had come to him he had only imagined him that he had only imagined the divine inspiration 
but according to al mazri this is incorrect because the proof of messenger message which is miracle of receiving divine inspiration is indicative of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam truthfulness and he is in fable character in conveying the message therefore believing in something that has been invalidated by evidence is wrong so according to abu al janki and yusufi the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam illness results from effect of black magic done to him did not affect the status of prophethood so we have to understand he was truthful and it does not affect his prophethood and this because of this ailment without any adverse effect in his life we fell messengers at a large and would even increase their status in the next life therefore the fact that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam imagine okay as a result of illness caused by black magic that he had done something of life's routine you know daily routine chores he he imagined that but he didn't do it so previously many uh, scholars they reject that hadith okay i hope that is clear don't ask those question oh how come you quoted the daif hadith i'm just reading the difference of opinions what they say regarding that matter so i hope this is clear a uh, routine activities which he had not really done and the fact that he completely recovered from such an ailment through the support of allah what happened gradually he improved with the allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala's will who revealed the uh, site with the spell was buried mean that messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam would not affect by this at all this was like an other ailment like like how you fell sick and then you are cured the same way he got cured and that well was filled with the earth the black magic did not affect his reasoning but only his perception so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam imagined doing things such as touching one of his wives which he had not really done and in terms of ailment so the previously what i mentioned that was the opinion and they said they reject those regarding the um, you know doing uh, sexual intercourse and not doing it and not having the ability that is not the thing okay the reality here some of the scholar says just touching one of his wives which he had not really done okay and in terms of ailment such acts of imagination are not harmful it was only personal things nothing related to wahi or anything and there are some who believe that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ailment as a result of black magic uh, uh degraded his message no nothing like that don't uh, believe in such thing and the explicit story of uh, musa al islam with the pharaoh and all those things has been mentioned and musa al islam to be firm and not to fear anything and in that we see in surah at taha ayah number 67 to 69 and uh, here i'm going to just uh, read this and then stop here we'll continue in the third part So here Musa al Islam can see fear with himself. With Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Fear not; surely you will have the upper hand." And we have seen this uh, ayah before. And throw that which is in your right hand; it will swallow up that which have made that which they have made it only a magic trick, and the magician will never be successful. So here Musa al Islam has been convinced by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, "You do not fear. You throw what is in your hand, that is staff." and uh, the staff uh, and magicians wala yuflihu sahiru haiswata wherever the magicians comes from they are not successful and will continue in the next clip jazakallah khairan kasim